Hello everybody and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian and I'm here to bring you the next episode in our series on the constellations. We're going back to the circumpolar region of the sky this week as we take a closer look at Draco the Dragon. I find Draco by looking at the stars in the Little Dipper, so let's take a moment to refresh how we find the Little Dipper. We start from our regular starting point, the Big Dipper, which in the spring is high in the sky after sunset. Remember that we use the last two stars in the cup of the Big Dipper to draw a line out to Polaris, the North Star. Polaris is the last star in the handle of the Little Dipper. And just like the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper is made of seven stars, but the Little Dipper is smaller and dimmer. Look at the first two stars in the cup of the Little Dipper, the two nearest the handle. Because the Little Dipper is faint, it can be difficult to see in areas with significant light pollution, and these two stars are usually the hardest to see. But their spacing very closely resembles the last two stars in the cup, which are brighter and easier to spot. If you can develop a good sense of where these two stars are, even if you can't see them very well, you can use them to find our constellation. Imagine a line from the top star in that cup running down through the bottom star in that cup, and extend that line out. It will take you to a trapezoid shape of stars. Because the trapezoid is pretty large, we don't need to be super accurate about our starting point. Even just a general idea of where those Little Dipper stars are will get you here. The trapezoid forms the head of Draco, or the dragon. In modern Western culture, dragons are frequently drawn as large, hulking, dinosaur-like monsters. Draco is not one of these dragons. Instead, Draco looks more like classical Chinese depictions of dragons, longer, more snake-like, and flowing. The trapezoid makes the dragon's head. The body makes a backwards S shape, and the tail threads between the big and little dippers. The tip of the dragon's tail ends almost even with the cup of the big dipper. We've already looked at one of the stars in Draco. Instead of drawing a line from the last two stars in the cup of the Big Dipper, let's draw a line using the first two stars in the cup. Extend that line from the bottom star through the top star, and carry it out to the first star in Draco you come across. This is the star Thuban. Thuban has the distinction of having been the North Star nearly 4,000 years ago. When the pyramids of Egypt were built, one side of each was aligned to face geographic north. So the Egyptians would have used this star to determine that direction accurately. There is a famous deep sky object up in the first bend of Draco's body, called New Galactic Catalog 6543. You may have heard NGC 6543 called by its modern name, the Cat's Eye Nebula. The word nebula, plural nebulae, comes from the Latin meaning cloud. Astronomical nebulae are vast clouds of gas and dust in space, and they can exist in many different forms. NGC 6543 is a planetary nebula, which doesn't have anything to do with planets. Planetary nebulae are so named because when viewed through a telescope, these fuzzy clouds can look similar to the way planets appear in telescopes, like little disks or dots, whereas stars will always look like tiny points. So through a telescope, NGC 6543 resembles the image of a planet. However, through modern instruments like the Hubble Space Telescope, we can get a better idea of what's going on. Planetary nebulae are the end stage for smaller stars in our universe. At the end of its life, the star will begin to shed its outer layers as clouds of gas and dust. As these shells expand, they slam into the very sparse dust in between the stars and cause it to glow. But NGC 6543 is particularly complex, with these great looping structures that make it look something like a cat's eye. Hubble images like this one are the reason NGC 6543 is now commonly called the Cat's Eye Nebula. It's suspected that these shapes formed because the star that emitted these shells of gas wasn't alone. It had a companion star. Binary stars are capable of creating very complex shapes as they transition into planetary nebulae. So if it's clear where you are tonight, go out and look for the Little Dipper, and follow that to Draco the Dragon. Next time we'll use what we've covered to find another constellation. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium, wishing you clear skies.